Thank you for joining us to learn about human cognition and data visualization. In this video, you will learn the importance of using techniques such as color and size within your different chart types. When we think about how we tell stories, it's important to know or at least have a general idea of how the brain works and how we um, conceive or how human cognition works, cognition. So when we think about a dashboard, this is a perfect example of something that is designed and it's been designed over, I don't know, a hundred years. And it's continuing to get designed to make it more effective. So there's a reason you've got RPM and miles as the biggest circles in the middle of the dashboard. And then something like oil temperature is lower. And then there's that red switch over there on the right hand side. It's not labeled, but it must be really important because you have to flick it up and then do it. It's probably like your nitrous oxide or something. But when we think about the dashboard of a vehicle and then even fast forwarding, if you watch the uh, SpaceX launch um, a couple of weeks ago where the rocket went into space with with humans for the first time in a decade in the US, um, we, we see that things evolve to make them easier and easier to use. The dashboard and a car is designed to give you the most important information and our brain immediately goes to the largest things that are in the middle because it's important. But at the same time, we kind of see this red thing over in the left-hand side, don't know what that is. But my point with the dashboard is, even in a vehicle, you look at the dashboard, everything is designed to make sure that you have the most important data right in front of you to operate the vehicle. So when we think about graphics, graphics are cognitive tools that extends what our brain remembers. This is um, uh, one of my favorite uh, visualizations that you've probably seen many times, but it's basically a bunch of dots in rows, or is it in columns? Based on how your brain works, you're seeing this as a bunch of rows or a bunch of columns or vice versa. Same with the two images below it. Do you see a vase or do you see two people looking at each other? The image on the right, do you see the attractive woman or do you see the older woman who's not as attractive. The brain is focusing in on the shapes, the curves, and it's telling us what to actually see. And what happens with the brain is that we're constantly, things are coming in and then things are leaving. Every few seconds, things are coming in and things are leaving. So it only retains what's important. And that's why it's important that when you design your visualizations and use these best practices, you're actually highlighting the things that matter the most. So our brain is actually programmed to look for specific attributes. And you'll see here, the stimulus that stands out the most will help you complete your analysis. And this is called selective visual attention and pre-attentive processing. So if I kind of bring up our ways to actually um, use these signal techniques, they'll become very obvious to you that, yeah, that, that makes perfect sense. I This is like, what I see all the time or how I notice things all the time. Well, there's actually science behind this. And if you know about the Gestalt theory, he talked about this and how we use these signals to tell our brain what to focus on or to move our focus onto something else. So what the brain does is it looks at position, the 2D or 3D position of objects, size being height, width, arc, um, the size of a circle, like the volume, Form, is something uh, a line, angle, is it a square, is it an arc, um, is it in a, uh, a circular space, appearance, you could have blinking um, measures, large, uh, uh, large tones, heavy tones, saturation, movement, like direction, flicker, speed of movement, and then quantity, so things like groups of bubbles. So immediately under quantity, you see that there's three groups of bubbles here. What do those groups mean? Well, we don't know yet because there's really nothing to tell us that in this visualization, but immediately our brain goes to this and says, yeah, there's three groups and one looks like it has more than the other. Um, and so this is what our brain is doing and this is what we are doing and you need to do in your visualizations to help folks looking at your visualizations actually focus on what's important and then um, know what you want them to leave that visualization with, what story you're trying to tell. So again, when we talk about pulling this together into charts, we look at what's the most effective and what's the least effective. So out of the, um, the six areas that I just showed you, we can use these in different ways to ensure that our point 
gets across effectively in um, the story that we're trying to tell. So when we look at the most effective ways for our brain to not only understand what we're looking at, but remember it, it's 2D position, the length. So think about the length of a bar or a column chart, the angle, think of a line chart, um, and then added marks. So is there highlights, is there markers, something like that. And then there's least effective um, ways of trying to convey or help people understand information. Area, color, texture, and volume will actually um, not help you tell your story. They could confuse people or they could leave people with a different um, uh, result than actually you were trying to get them to. So when you think about color and texture, we'll look at some best practices around that and I'll show you a tool you can use. That's one of the biggest violators. And when I look at color and texture, I think about um, charts that you see on, um, on the news. Um, and it's clear that it was like a marketing department that put it together because, and then someone liked the shade of green, for example, because all the, the, the circles and the pie or the slices are like a different shade of green. You can't tell the difference. What, what is that green color? Uh, a percentage of the population is colorblind. How can they tell it looks all gray to them? So looking at texture and color is very risky. Volume, things like bubble charts are very risky to use. And I'll show you some example of these in our um, do's and don'ts later. So if you want to be successful, use some of the signal techniques we talked about earlier, and then look at these four um, ways of representing your visualizations, either through 2D position, length, angle, or added marks. Be sure to check out the next video in this series, Data Visualization Best Practices and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Reveal BI.